All right, Tets, you're up next. What do you got tonight? I recently went back to a game that I really don't know why I stopped playing. Um, Elite Dangerous. Um, it's a uh, space fighter sim. I guess I said it's just a space fighter, just, I guess, spaceship piloting sim. Because you can do a lot in the game. Um, Is it an actual flat sim? Yes. Uh, to the Sweet. point where, so actually talking about lethality, this is a great segue. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I could provide it. <laughs> the game is pretty, pretty realistic. And when I say pretty realistic, I mean, like, if you, just taking off from like a dock, you have to do a pre-flight check, make sure your thrusters are working, take off your landing uh, a gear or else you're going to, you know, not go fast enough. You have to listen to the, uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, traffic controller is about, you know, you got to pay attention to the ships that are also flying in and out. If you go too fast, you'll get fined, maybe even shot out of the sky if the station doesn't like you. And let alone if you're part of a different faction, then, you know, there's, they'll treat you totally differently than they'll treat you if you're, you know, part of the faction that's in control versus their enemies and stuff. Like, it gets really in depth and it's a lot of fun. But, like, as I say, like, like it just takes one little, like, so one of the main station types, just to kind of give you an idea with the lethality um, tangent or uh, segue in, being spinning, um, think a D twenty. It's not quite a D twenty, but just think of a floating D twenty, and it has like this tiny little mail slot that you have to fly into, but it spins on that axis, so that mail slot is spinning like you know from like a clock. So you have to actually pile it in while doing a slight corkscrew and if you don't if you go straight if you clip your wing you'll wedge yourself in there and easily explode your ship um you lose your ship anything that you're transporting your all ship. of the, <laughs> all of your modules you so i think you're gonna die in that you're flying the ship don't you die you do but so and this is kind of where like that lethality of consequences this is actually one of the games i was thinking about about that is that you then get restarted and you can um, either buy back the ship you know the whole setup that you had before or just start from start from scratch start from the beginning and a lot of people that play in the art like do because do it it is kind of a bit of you make your own adventure and i'll get into that here in a minute but uh there are like rp servers on discord and rp uh, uh forums and stuff for it is it multiplayer or single player? It is MMO, um, but you Ooh. don't have to be, you don't have to actively be playing with other people. You can play in your own instance or you can play with people. And um, again, part of the lethality is somebody as you're, you might be doing a perfect landing and they'll shoot, they'll get a fine for shooting, but they nicked your ship and caused you to wedge yourself and die. And yeah, so th those players don't aren't really there but that's why i tend to play in uh solo is because i'm always afraid of those players showing up and screwing up my game um, <laughs> i will be very upset by that uh, I'd be like you son of a bitch i don't i don't know that i've ever seen that happen but i know that it can and so it's like a shadow in the back of my mind um <laughs> But so you have people where if they ever die, they will totally never buy back their ship, and they will always start off as if they are a new character in in the universe. Like they're a brand new starship pilot, they will get rid of all their credits. They'll start their bank account at zero and just. Yeah, I guess kind of you have that in any type of game where it's they're running it on death. Iron Man. Yeah, but it's pretty common in um, Elite Dangerous, or so it seems compared to other games. I don't know, maybe I'm. Uh, those circles enough but so the thing about elite dangerous is um yes so it's it, it has an uh, part of the elements that makes eve online either really really interesting or really really dull um it's not quite spreadsheets in space but if you decide to do say a trader you can look up online like at each station you can buy goods but you would then have to go online, see what stations are buying goods for better price than what you bought them at to go sell them at. And by the time you get there, the prices may have fluctuated. So, you know, a lot of people have a second monitor up. So it can be very tedious. Um, you can be like a space pirate if you want, just setting shop in lanes and pulling people out of orbit and 
stealing their cargo and stuff. Um, You have bounty hunters that specifically hunt players that do that. Um, Because again, like in in addition to doing the mission, uh, the, the trading, you have missions you also have like people that are wanting to go places. Different stations pretty much just have different jobs, and you can choose whatever jobs at the station you're at, or go find another station and find some jobs there. Um, but the thing that's really, really cool about the game is that it's a one-to-one representation of the Milky Way galaxy. Really? Yeah, and that's there's cool. only certain areas that have human in um, inhabitants, and so you can go way off, they call the bubble, but way off the beaten path, and you can be in a whole bunch of star systems where there's no systems whatsoever and you have to install like fuel scoops to scoop fuel from stars in order to keep going and then you just collect a whole bunch of exploration data make your way back to human space and you just sell all that data of stuff that you just just saw while you were just going um and people have seen some really cool stuff um that actually sounds pretty cool like where can you if you go off the beaten path far enough, is it possible that you could like create a new station out there? Is that something you could do? Yeah. So that's one of the really cool things. They have these community goals that they'll set up and it, it's a living, breathing environment where um, frontier developments, the team that uh, does this, they pay attention to what the community, what the player base is doing. And they will start to do like, there was one guy who made it, uh, I think they could, it's called Beagle's, station i think is the name of the station but essentially he made it way 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 far almost on the exact opposite side of the galaxy of where soul is um and then he turned and came back and people started doing that regularly and so they created a station at that point and they created this whole narrative there's this whole mission involved and then you had like people going out there on these uh, community goals to help bring uh stuff to build the station or to help you know transfer personnel or whatever the case was and so as players start to do these things and start visiting these areas more often develop and then they'll put in a station there that's Um, pretty cool players can make factions i actually recently just jumping back in uh because the game is more fun with player with with friends and so i joined a faction and they recently um became a actual player faction and have recently uh become the primary faction in a star system and so they own the star system now as um and so they get to make the the political decisions in the background again that's one of the other things you can do there's a, a bunch of different powers and you can specifically help out powers that you want or hinder powers that you don't want taking power um so there's a lot you can do but all of that was there when I used when I played back in 2015, and I stopped playing. I think like like in the September or the October of that year, and um, I just came back. And they've added so much more to the game. You can now land on planets. Um, you can do mining uh, stuff on planets. You because you used to be able to like mine asteroids. That was one of the other ways you could make money was mine asteroids, refine the metals, and go sell them. Well, now you can do that on a planet. They have this little like rover vehicle that you can do and people started discovering these ancient like sites there was this alien race sharing the galaxy with oh, us oh yeah i heard about the alien event stuff in the past oh. and, and that started coming into play they're called the thargoids and so they've started showing up and they would originally be really sporadic they were uh, are they enemies are they not but now suddenly they'll show up start attacking uh, like stations and you can help defend the stations and they're pushing their way towards soul and so the player base is trying to essentially prevent the aliens from reaching humanity's home world um that's pretty badass you don't have to do any of that if you don't want to. If you just want to be a regular old space trucker who doesn't care about the war going on, space you can trucking. do that. <laughs> I want I want them to be like, guy. oh no, they're attacking the base. Look, I don't really care what they're doing. I got these packages to yeah. deliver and I'm going to get them there on time. <laughs> Hilarious. Logistics. You can just Google. You can just Google uh, I want I want it to now RPG. be like a literal space 18 wheeler. Like that you can just drop. <laughs> oh man. Is gorgeous <laughs> in this game if you're into if you're into sci-fi ships just the ship design i gorgeous. i i mean this this stuff hits home for me because i love sci-fi ships and shit you know we both share that we love yeah. sci-fi crap i well, actually there's some people in in the discord for the uh, free company uh, that i'm part of for Final Fantasy 14 that also play this game 
So every now and then when I'm when I'm like trying to clear out all the fucking chat that's in uh <laughs> all the lit up boxes for all the topics, I will sometimes see that if stuff being placed down for Elite Dangerous, I'll see like somebody we had somebody who was really invested into it. They were showing like their ship builds, what they were doing every day. Um, they've stopped really sharing it now, but uh for a while, I mean, you were following what they were doing day to day in the game. So uh, and it's, it's pretty cool. It is crazy. Like, um, Original, the first Elite game came out in 1984, so the the series in and of itself has been around for a long time. It, so isn't it a question because I know that there's a game like called Wing Commander, um, and I know I don't know if that game series. had any. I think that sorry, uh, I think that game had like there's there's some uh between uh Elite Dangerous and Wing Commander and whatnot. There's there's similarities in them, correct? They were contemporaries. I think it was the second Elite Dangerous and Wing Commander that were contemporaries. Maybe maybe it was with the first. I don't fully remember. Okay. And they definitely played off each other. Um, the This newer stuff does borrow things from Wing Commander that um, uh, you know, were successful that the original Elites didn't have in them. Um, okay. Because I'm not... Because I mean, they, they, it, all it really was was a space combat simulation video game. You just you flew around and you could decide whether you wanted to become this, this, or that. And then you know, essentially what you're talking about, like you could be a space pirate, you could be a um, you could be a uh, a bounty hunter, you could just be a full on trader if you wanted to. There was it was really like just how you wanted to live your life. So cool things that i think of uh, going to um my discussion last week about um progression in games there's no um like skills related to each uh job or class there's no like classes or anything you yeah. just kind of kit out your ship and you go do it and let's say you're in the middle of it and you're like eh, i don't really enjoy this well then okay just do something else like like you don't have to change class you don't have to worry about even necessarily re-kitting out your ships almost all of the ships can do all of the things it might not be optimized for it but you could use the small little fighter to run cargo if you so decided you could take the massive freighter ship and go take it in a battle if you so wanted um there's nothing that stops you besides maybe losing the ship and the cargo and everything that you paid for <laughs> up to that point but yeah that's kind of half the the fun the 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 risk of it the, um, fun. i put in a lot of hours when i first played it and so are there generally like now question for you because this is generally something that's pretty common are there um are there just generally certain ships that are just better or it's not even i have certain ships are there like like you have like your different factions your different like you know um builders of ships and whatnot are there generally like it, it, like does builder like uh builder a ha their ships are generally like transporter ships and like builder b's their their ships are generally combat ships is that like how it is or is it sort like of. You, or I mean, is it, or is it, okay so it's more like then it's gonna be more like where it's like you have like your different manufacturers but they kind of dabble in a little different areas and it just kind of depends on your manufacturer and their design. Kind, that of really a bit of, like? kind of a bit of both. So, um, because there's a lot of lore in this game and a lot of it again is, is things that they've put into place because the players have, but some of it they've created. But, um, uh, when it comes to the ship manufacturers, um, for example, there's one, um, I forget, I'm blanking on the manufacturer's name now, but they make a line of ships that are like named after sea animals, orca, dolphin, these cruise liner ships that are designed specifically to transport passengers in luxury. Really? Yeah, and you could use it for cargo, but that's what that's what they make them for, and they're very much designed for that. Whereas um, Lake on Spaceways, they make these big, bulky freighter ships, which again you could use for something else, but they very much specialize in transporting cargo. I'm talking hundreds of tons of cargo in these things. Um, and then you have Core Dynamics, who their ships are much more agile, fast. They're your basic fighter ships. They're also smaller than a lot of the other ships, again, for that maneuverability. But that being said, all three of them 
the I think it's Sam Kruger is the first one, whatever their name is. They they don't, but Lacon does have one that is designed to be more of a fighter role, and Core Dynamics does have a cargo ship, but the majority of its line is fighters, whereas the majority of Lacon is cargo. But then you have um uh just have like ships across the board where they just just make what they make um uh, and so you can pick up a fighter from them or cargo or cruise liner or a etc etc explorer okay. ship so it, it, it actually depends more on the particular ship manufacturer but again it's kind of like it's kind of like uh modern vehicles today you know like some companies make all kinds right. of vehicles where some only make cars some only make trucks some make atv you know whatever yeah i In that regard all right, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And and it's those little details that make it feel real. It makes because that's that's the biggest thing about this game. The immersion factor in it is so hot. Like, you know, you're kind of good a little bit with entertain, you know, finding uh, ways to entertain yourself. It gets really immersive. Um, there, you can even like press a button and look around your cockpit uh, while you're piloting. Um, and they've recently, one of the other things that they added since I was last in there is actually allowing you to customize your, um, avatar, your, uh, your pilot and certain ships that have multiple seats in them piloting that one ship. And so That'd you can awesome. see, you can see all of your buddies in the ship. You can't walk around in the ship, but you can, you know, look, look around and see them and, you know, divvy up jobs and everything. Um, Starfinder of the video game. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you if you have VR, it blows it out of the water. Tets, where's my AR uh MMO plot sim soft thing? One day, uh, it's, it's one right day. here. It's, it's right I want, here. I wanna sit I wanna put on my Google glasses and shoot my lasers. Oh honestly, like like if you if you have your Oculus and you have a um a throttle well, that, and yeah, stick. Yeah, that, that's VR, not AR. Oh VR, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was hearing VR, not AR. Thank you. VR makes me yeah. sick. It is. It makes um, a lot of people sick. Though, like, like I, I was actually looking up a thing online to um, uh, turn your phone by using Google Cardboard. Yeah. There's a little app that you can download to your phone to actually use it for tracking to uh, uh, turn a Google Cardboard into a game the compatible. The fuck is Google Cardboard? It's where you make a VR headset out of cardboard. Yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> what? And put your phone in it. Yep. I mean, it's, it's not awesome. compatible with like all games or anything. What? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it has its, its own, own thing. app. So it has. There's this other app that I was talking about. Mind you blown. download it as long as um uh, it, uh Steam offers it as a VR game on Steam. You can then route it to your phone and use it with this app. I, it does have a cost to it, and I don't remember. Get right. blown out, Nintendo. This came out three years ago. Google yeah, is the original cardboard pioneer. <laughs> Labo, <laughs> no mo, kick to the curbo. I got my uh, Google cardboard. God, it's, yeah, um, actually, uh, almost four years ago. Yeah. My yeah, Google almost. cardboard has a um, R two D two um uh paint job thing on it, so it looks like a little Star Wars droid. <laughs> um. But the, the problem with with cardboard because it's on your phone is you do have to use your hands, so you have to like put a strap on it, you know, which I guess wouldn't be theoretically too hard to put it on there because cardboard's meant to be where you could design it at home. But um, I did pick up a, a throttle and stick for this game when I first bought it, and it does it makes the game so much more fun. But the reality, like like they tried to, it is very simulationist, and so. You can quickly run out of buttons, and even if you're using keyboard mappings, sometimes you have to do dual keys for a uh, command just because there are that many things. Um, this is one of its downsides, if that's not something that sounds like fun to you, to memorize where all of the different key things are. Um, they do... Mm. so. As I said, the community is doing some really cool stuff with this, but there's this one guy who has this thing called Voice Attack um, that you can install on your computer if you have a microphone, and it's a it's a program that takes you know you you say whatever you want, and then it'll um, 
game so you can just maybe you don't have the all the buttons for like your landing gear you just say deploy landing gear and your landing gear drops down so that's, that's really like I, I downloaded that as well because i mean i just want to sit there in my chair with my with my joystick and throttle and just like dictate the things rather than having to reach across the desk to hit the keyboard and it is so much fun um i bet man that's, that sounds pretty fun yeah to it uh, some people say that it's you know uh and to be fair, there's some truth to this, that it is a mile wide and an inch deep because, again, there's all these things to it. But it can get a little repetitive. It can get a little boring. It can be space if that's what you are looking for it. Um, if you're the whole point of playing it is, is just to make as much money to buy the best ship in the game and then that's it, it can very quickly get stale. Um, but it wasn't. With them, with the idea that people want to fly spaceships and they will find an excuse to fly spaceships. Here's okay. a universe for you to do it in. Go have fun. Like that's that's the whole premise of the game. Um, it really is. <laughs> it's finding an excuse to jump in your spaceship <laughs> and just go fly. Do we really need one? You don't need one. Get, you get don't need the damn robot, Shinji. Yep. Get the damn robot, Shinji. Get the damn tie fighter, Luke. <laughs> Luke. Get in the damn TIE Fighter, Luke. I'm pretty sure Aunt Beru said that in New Hope. <laughs> well, well, no, here's the real question, Tess. How does it stack up to the best MMO of all time, Final Fantasy XIV? Oh my god. <laughs> um, so, you know the thing where you can Not be in the class and jump up and... Well, you did but say so MMO. You know the class where you can jump up in the air and then you can like come down on the opponent, but then be still totally useless in the fight? Um, you can do that in this, too. Can I stand in the fire? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I want to stand that in the fire. That dragoon shade. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the extent of everything I know about Final Fantasy XIV, so I don't have is any you, more all you know is you, you, You're <laughs> like in that position where you've seen enough no. memes to know about the game, but not enough to truly scratch. Uh, like, the joke's on person. you. I've been playing Ninja, so I'm Naruto. <laughs> Get out of here. I got my hands on. I'm using the new ones. Yep. <laughs> they, do. Like, they do. They Naruto. They right. do. They Naruto the shit out of it. I say that being one when I when I back when Final Fantasy fourteen had to do the trial period and played, I was playing Lancer with the idea of going to Dragoon, so I totally say that. Dragoon's that fucking song. awesome. So um, but... <laughs> Dragoon, Dragoon was great in uh the original and then heaven's word but dragoon started becoming pretty support heavy in storm blood which kind of sucks because it doesn't really feel like dragoon those are words yeah you got your old 15 percent crit buff or whatever that you gotta yeah. use that's fine but now now it's a lot of things that you're gonna do are it doesn't feel very dragoon because dragoon always felt like it this is the dude that kills fucking dragons yeah but now it's a very supporting meaty class melee class and i was like eh it's not why I play. It's not why I play Dragoon. I want to stab the dragon, not help my <laughs> friend support to kill it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't putting cards on people. That's what Meta said. <laughs> Don't you put that astrology on me? <laughs> Get your beliefs out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 